Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 1968 Japanese horror film Kuroneko. This is a film by director Kaneta Shindo. The film describes the haunting of a band of samurai by an onryu, a vengeful spirit that is formed as a, as a result of an attack. Kuroneko is, I believe, one of the most famous Japanese horror films. I love me a little bit of supernatural horror, I love the design elements for it, and uh, from a few production stills I've seen of this, it has uh, some very, very interesting uh, makeup choices. So yeah, let's watch it. And before we begin, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. Okay, let's watch Kaneto Shindo's Kuroneko. Uh, oh, we forgot. This is uh, available for for viewing uh, through the Criterion Collection. Oh, it didn't just fly. God damn it! Oh. Black Cat, Kuroneko. Something to be appreciated about black and white films. Obviously, Japan has a different tradition of black and white versus color films than America. But despite technical advances, you know, some aspects of film readily adopt technological advances, sound being a huge one. Some things are retained, whether for their artistic or their practical impact, black and white, use of actual film itself being another. And I, I think it speaks to a certain quality that black and white elicits that so many filmmakers used it for such a long time after color film had been developed. Technical has been around, was around earlier than like 1939 to my memory. My uh, In my memory, 1939 is the big blow up year with like uh, The Wizard of Oz and Gone with the Wind. And yet a full 30 years after that, there are still major studios employing black and white film. Major, major Japanese studios, you know what I mean. Ooh, got to chill with them just coming out of the forest like that. Just slightly out of focus. That's better. Okay, I didn't know that this movie was actually going to begin with... Like an actual rape. Of both the mother and the daughter. Excellent use of silence in the beginning act of this movie, and I like the kind of um, interplay from the extreme close-ups of when they entered into the hut, the kind of immediacy of that, and the cold, cold remoteness of them in the outdoors. And, you know, setting fire to a civilian's household after raping and murdering them it won't endear you to the audience either. <laughs> it's uh Batman Returns. Oh wow. So I wonder if, you know, Tim Burton had seen Kuroneko. Oh the way that like Japanese spirits moves. Oh, that's beautiful, and also freaky as shit. Oh, Jesus Christ, how'd they do that? Who knew that you could fall asleep at the wheel back in, like, you know, feudal Japan times? I didn't even know you could fall asleep on a horse. Yes, I did. I've seen Lawrence of Arabia. <laughs> You got me. What if she's a ghost? Beautiful use of the slow motion in this movie. This black and white just really gets into your head. This is thrilling. I'm like so pleased. 
It's so fluid and slow. This is so beautiful. The location scouting too. It's just like on point. Beautiful, beautiful locations. Uh, and and art design and, uh, and just like layering these two film prints with just the moving force in the background and then the house and the floor. Boy, you are in trouble. <laughs> They're gonna eat you alive. Oh, I love that. Oh my gosh. The little details of this movie are just like, oh. All of them are like putting a tingly feeling in me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, her face is transforming. Oh, I love that. This is such a cool project. I, I envy the actors who get to work on cool shit like this. Oshima is like, I'd like to have a word. <laughs> oh, full on. Oh, f Oh, just right on his dick. Oops. Oh, he offered her a ride. That's chivalrous of him. This is like its own little uh, under the skin kind of thing. I'm loving the like ritual of this and the the patience and the the trap. We gotta get Mika Levy over here to you know rescore Kuraneko. Wow. Okay. Yo, men be absolute fools. <laughs> This is me seeing uh, sales for Criterion. <laughs> JK, I don't actually do the Barnes & Noble sales for Barnes & Noble. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Oh, stunning. Who knows how to make an image look good quite like a horror director? They're always a bit loosey-goosey with the mother's uh, focus, huh? Part of it's obviously like the, the ethereal aspect, her being like a phantasm and whatnot, but she was out of focus for the uh, first scene too. <gasps> oh! He was ready. Boy, don't mess around. This movie's jam packed, action packed. Suspenseful, engrossing, delightful, heartwarming. Yes, wild boy. It kind of looks like Brody Lee. He's got an actual bear head in his, in his satchel. All right, you to you. Oh. Oh, now they're loving it. How many concubines does this dude need? Here we go again. Do you recognize me? Oh, nice. What you gonna do? That's your man. Oh. 
she's shocked to see it. Surprising amount of emotion conveyed in a very restrictive shot and a, a facial expression. But that's the beauty of context. We think of the Kuleshov effect as only affecting editing, but it's context in general. So what you gonna do about it? あなた様のお母様たちは今どこにいらっしゃるかは存じませぬがあなたがお二人に会いたいと思って夜も昼も戦で戦われたように定めし母ごもお嫁ごも夜も昼もあなたのお帰りを待ち望んでいらっしゃ
concept of the movie is fantastical, is supernatural. These like ghosts that are haunt haunting and avenging themselves upon samurai. The actual execution itself is very, very minimal and progressive and very logical, very in keeping with like how I view and understand the world and how I, I kind of understand how people act and navigate through the world and come to bad decisions and feel like they can't escape from them. Legit tears in her eyes. Hey. Man, they are going at it. I guess metaphorically, it also kind of speaks to like the generative aspect of post-war or post-trauma psychology. The the kind of need to, in, in some psychological frameworks, to renew and replenish and to, you know, reseed. But uh, like a lot of movies I've been watching this year, kind of exploring, filmmakers exploring the bounds of of attachment, of need, the degree to which they will pursue out their loved ones even under the most fraught circumstances. Something bad. Something I'd rather not discuss. Yeah, and also in slight ties with the kind of gender performance of this film. Uh, this is again a, a, a kind of display where the man is like very kind of straightforward and direct and the woman based on social conventions, in this case fantastical, a vow she has to the gods, have to be tight-lipped and silent and suggest rather than explicate. And so this movie is kind of like a manifestation of like the anxiety and also the, the anger that comes out of that silence. Beautiful, beautiful framing, beautiful lighting. I'm just like in awe. Look how clear he is in the middle ground. And then Raito is just like bathed in shadows, just slightly behind him. Baga! <laughs> Jesus. Props to the stuntmen in this movie as well. And a kind of Freudian conclusion, we've... We're heading to a showdown between a son and his mother. That's like sad as shit. Hey, do a kickflip! So sad. I oh, heartbroken. Why you hate your mother for this? Ugh. The son will never understand the mother's love. But kind of in the same vein as Ida, and taken to a fantastical context, but this is also similarly dealing with kind of like the fallout of war, of major trauma, in which families, loved ones, find like kind of impossible circumstances to try and cope with it to to try and process trauma this is what i love about really simplistic movies really really minimal simple stories is that they give so much birth to you as a as a viewer as an audience member to fill out the narrative when they're done right yeah, props to the stud men. Good on ya. Men and women. Oh my gosh. What led you to that conclusion? 
Like, genuinely, what led you to that conclusion? Where? <laughs> Where exactly? That's kind of a mean thing to say about a woman. And this is constructing a, a very interesting story on how a samurai kind of make their reputations and make their fortunes. It isn't through nobility, isn't through some Bushido code. They do it through pillaging villages, preying on poor villagers, making up stories of their own... Uh, of their own heroism and reputation. She can't. She's carrying this incredible trauma, this thirst for vengeance that you, in all of your bluntness, can't understand. Hmm. It's a beautiful revolution. As long as the samurai exists, as long as this war class exists, this vengeance will exist. Okay, okay, I'm into it. I'm into it. <laughs> That's foreboding. It's uh, the wailing. I love this test. I love a test for a final confrontation. It's just like so much more dynamic than like a battle, a test, is about will. Absolutely not, my dude. <laughs> I'll never be able to get over how dumb Gintoki is. Ugh. She's just like himbo incarnate. Literally all protagonists in a horror film just doesn't just doesn't understand the rules at all. Horror movie protagonists, so dumb. So dumb. So so dumb. By like nature they have to be, if they kind of represent the status quo. You'll never understand the thoughts, the feelings of the monster of the outsider, because you're just trapped in your own delusion of civilized society. Come on, Gintoki, you can be smarter than this. There you go. Oh. In a way, I think they've kind of framed this to make the sun out to also be just like a little bit of like on the dark path to be the aggressor, it, to be a kind of a threat or presenter of harm in the same way as the samurai in the beginning of the film. There is always this this threat of violence in the male characters. Of a desire to control and subjugate. It's a sad story, man. Mother and child. Just sad as shit. Oh, that's sad. Oh, Jesus. I wonder how they did that. Maybe they shot it upside down? Absolutely stunning. Just beautiful. Oh my god. Under the skin, literally. Literally under the skin. And like a man, he only knows how to stick his sword in things. This beautiful, beautiful nightmare. Just absolutely stunning. 
I'm so enthralled. This is so good. Ah. Oh. Absolutely beautiful. Amazing. So, 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 so good. Yeah, let's talk out some of this stuff. I said it reminded me a little bit of Batman Returns. Obviously for the part where the mother and Shige are revivified by the black cat. But also in terms of, this isn't like what Batman Returns is about. But it is something in Batman Returns. It, it's a gender war. There is this conflict between Bruce Wayne and Selina Kyle. They're totally enraptured by each other. They're, to they're eventually in love with each other. But they can't reconcile that with a like an un unjust world that has forced them into their positions batman as a you know kind of like a man of privilege representing the status quo selena kyle has been wronged has been objectified has been dehumanized by a kind of patriarchal misogynistic system and is wreaking out a bloody vengeance as a result uh, she is she is vengeance personified she is woman's wrath personified and so they have these kind of dueling aspects where the kind of sexual component of their identities is very attached to each other, but then that's pit against their like ideologies. And that narrative is being carried out here, I kind of think. I kind of think this is a film about a gender war that's been created by war and by trauma that these characters have been locked into certain social expectations and tracks based on their gender. And the movie's about them bristling up against that and seeking out retribution based on the injustice of that. Shige and the mother are seen as sexual objects to be taken and tossed away, seen as monsters to be disposed of. And Gintoki, as a samurai, is kind of put along this track of needing to slay them, needing to dispatch them, being unable to communicate with them or reach compromise or understand them because his role is not to understand, his role is to execute. Really good. I got Batman vibes. I got I got Greek tragedy vibes. I definitely got some some Agamemnon, some Clytemnestra, some Clytemnestra stuff going on in this. So this check those boxes for me. Yeah, that was Kuroneko. Beautifully designed, beautifully directed, haunting, haunting images, incredible story, great performances by the leads. You should check it out. And if you enjoyed this video, click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house movies. Let me know if you have any recommendations on like oldie horror stuff or even newy horror stuff. Uh, some it depends on what it is. If you like it, I'll see if I like it. And until next time, keep watching good movies.